In this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the watercolor and pencil action. So firstly, you want to download some watercolor graphics uh, to use with the action. So I set up some links below, uh, which you can just follow them and download those packs. They're free, um, and they're the ones that I've used to help build this action. So go ahead and do that, and then jump into Photoshop. So what we want to do firstly is load the action. So if we go up to our window menu, um, and just make sure you select actions and the actions panel will pop up. Um, next we want to hit this top right hand corner icon and just select load actions. Okay, so in the download you would have received uh, the watercolor pencil.atm file. So let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, so next we want to open our photo that we want to work with. So I'm going to do that. Uh, it's, so I've got this, this guy here I'm going to work with. So what we want to do is just twirl open the folder for the watercolor and pencil action. Select the action and hit play. Okay. So you'll notice that a window pops up straight away. And so this window is asking um, for your watercolor graphics to use in the image. So let's, I've got the folder here. And so these are all the ones that I've downloaded from the links below. Um, so let's go ahead and apply uh, our first overlay. So you notice that when you've when you've selected a graphic and you hit OK, um, the action will stop, and it stops with a bounding box around your um, texture. So what we want to do now is we want to scale this. So if I just grab these corners, we want to scale them up and fill our entire uh, image. And so when we've done that, hit enter, the action will continue. And so another uh, window will pop up and this is asking for our second um, watercolor overlay for the photo. So let's go ahead and select uh, another photo, uh, sorry, another watercolor graphic. Let's go over this one. Again, we want to scale this up over the entire photo. You, know, you can rotate it if you want, but don't worry too much um, about the positioning now because we can change that after the action's finished. So when that's done, hit enter and the action will uh, continue to play. Okay, so there's our um, first look at the result. And you can see what the action has done. It has created um, two folders and a layer here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and talk through that now. So in our um, top folder, Master Adjustments, we just twirl this one open. We have a few layers we can experiment with here. The first one is called Overlay Contrast. So you'll notice that the opacity of this layer is at 28%. So if I just select, um, if I move my mouse over the word opacity, click and drag to left and right, you can see that it adjusts the opacity of that layer. If we bring it to 100%, makes it much more contrast. If bring it to zero, flattens it right out. So you can experiment with that. Just might might just uh, help bring a bit more detail uh, into the image. So I'll leave that around 30%. The layer below, we've got solid color overlay. And if I just flick that on, it will fill uh, the entire design uh, in a single color. So we can just double click on this box and we can, you know, change this to whatever we want. Okay? So next, let's hide this layer below, we have randomized color. So if we just double click on this icon here and we've got our hue slider, so we can grab this and drag this around to change, change the colors. Okay? Now the layer below, edge lightness. Again, this layer opacity is set to 20%. If I click and drag on the word opacity again, bring it up to 100%, you'll see that it helps um, really highlight the edges of your photo a lot more. So if I bring this to zero, you'll see it's basically taking them all away. So you can, um, you can play with the opacity here to get the look that you're happy with. Okay. Now this, this one here, thin pencil lines, it's a very subtle detail. Um, if I zoom in, if I zoom in down here on his shirts, um, 
all it is is these really subtle lines here. Just adds a bit more detail to the image. So I just drag the opacity up for this layer. You can see that at work there. So you want to keep this one low all the time. Okay, zoom back out. Alright, so let's go into our next folder called Watercolor Overlays. Let's twirl this folder open. Just minimize these two folders. So we have Overlay Design 1 and Overlay Design 2. Now these folders um, relate to each uh, watercolor graphic that you imported. So if I just hold hide this folder, there was our first one that we imported. That was the second watercolor um, graphic we imported. So we'll turn those back on and let's go inside the folder and see what we got. So we've got control over each um, overlay and the appearance of it. So what we can do here, this top one, we can randomize the color of that overlay, like that. Okay. Now the layer below, if we turn this one off and turn this one on, this will fill um, your watercolor graphic a single color. Like that. Okay. Turn that off. Now this one, invert colors, I'll explain um, how this one works in the next example. So below is our graphic that we imported, the Media Militia um, graphic. So what we can do here, if I just zoom out and go to Edit, Transform, Scale, and we can rotate this if we want and scale it up. You know, you just want to get a look that you're happy with. Okay, so let's move that to about there. Hit Enter. And what we can also do, um, if we right click on this layer, we can go to Replace Contents. And we can just select um, another photo, another watercolor graphic. So we can just go to this one. Okay? Just like that. So it's really simple. Alright, the next layer below is called Overlay Area. So this is the area where this watercolor graphic will be visible. Okay? So I'm not sure how well you can see this graphic here. Um, you can see the black inside this layer. So the black is the area that the watercolor graphic is going to appear on. So if I just grab um, my brush tool and brush black into this layer, you'll see that it reveals more of the watercolor. So you can actually brush in more watercolor if you want. Now the opposite, if I erase from this layer, you know, I can erase some of the watercolor. Just like that. Okay? So the folder below is set up exactly the same um, as the above folder. So you can just experiment with those settings there as well. Layer below is our pencil layer. If we switch this one off, you'll see that, um, well, you can see the original photo coming through. So we want to always keep that ticked on. Okay? Okay. If we head back inside the watercolor overlays folder and take a look at the invert colors adjustment layer. Now we want to use this layer when we're working with textures with a black background. So let me just demonstrate this. So if we replace this texture with one of these with a black background, let's just go, let's go this one here. You notice that most of the um, design is now black because of that black background. So what we can do is we can turn on the visibility for invert colors and then it'll flip anything that's black to white. Okay, so then you can use the randomized color to, and if you drag the hue um, to the far left, you'll actually get the original colors um, that came with the texture. Because initially we were inverting the colors, it was inverting the, um, the primary colors here. So you want to drag this all the way to the left to bring the original colors back, but turn the blacks to whites. Okay? So, we just undo that, turn that off. Okay, so next I want to demonstrate some troubles that you um, might run into if you're using quite a dark photo and how to sort of get around that. So let's go ahead and delete these uh, layers and close this photo. Now I'm going to open up uh, another image. So this is quite a dark image and I'm just going to demonstrate the results here. Um, and what we can do to get a better outcome. 
uh, when using darker photos. So let's go ahead and play the action again. Now let's select our watercolor graphics. Let's go let's use this one. Scale it up over your photo. Hit enter when you're happy. Select our second watercolor. Let's go let's go this one here. Scale this up. Hit enter. Okay, so there's our result, and you'll notice that we can really, um, so we can hardly see any of our uh, subject here in the photo. There's a bit of definition around the face, but there's something we can do um, to get a better result here. So if we delete these folders and start again, but before we start, what we want to do is we want to adjust the brightness of your photo. So if we go to Image Adjustments Levels, and if we drag this slider up and make the image a lot brighter. It's around there. Click OK. And let's run the action again. And we'll select the same two overlays. So it was this one. Scale that up. And then our second one was this one. Scale it up. Enter. Okay, you can see this time there is uh, a lot more clarity. Uh, in the image there's a lot more focus on our subject um, so just remember that if you're using a dark image and um, the outcome wasn't what you expected try adjusting the brightness of your photo because uh, you'll get a totally different result now I'm going to demonstrate how you can add um, some additional texture uh, to this photo so let's go ahead and we'll select our top folder here and go file place and I've got a texture here, I'll import, so double click on the texture to load it, and let's rotate it and scale it up over our design. Enter. Okay, so next we want to change our blend mode to multiple, and you can see that now that's um, bled through on our design, but it's still a bit dark. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to rasterize uh, my texture layer and I'm just going to apply some levels, image adjustment levels, and just make it a bit brighter. Like that, okay? And what I might do, I might try to transform this into more of a vintage looking watercolor, so we'll remove this, these purple tones and we'll burn the edges a bit. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to our master adjustments folder, we'll turn on solid color overlay, but let's change this to um, a dark brown, something like that. Okay, so next I want to burn uh, these edges. So what we'll do, we'll create a new, uh, new layer and we'll fill it black. Double click on the layer to bring up the layer style dialog box. We're going to take the fill opacity to zero. Let's go add a uh, inner glow. We're going to change the blend mode to color burn, the color to black. Then we're just going to turn up the size here. And you can see when I bring the size up that it's burning the edges. Okay, so we can drag that right up. You can bring the choke up as well. Oops. Like that. And we can bring the opacity down a bit. So now if we look down the bottom left hand corner, you can see that the edges look burnt in the top here, okay? So that's it. I hope you enjoy using the action and come up with some really good results. I'm just going to flick through now and show you some of the other results that I've got using this action.
Okay.